everybody, Dr. Diane here. And in this video, I wanna talk about Klebsiella and its impact on the brain. So Klebsiella is a microorganism that's actually commonly found in the gut. And it can cause some gastrointestinal symptoms, but it can also cause brain and central nervous system inflammation. Now this particular microorganism is important to talk about and I want it to bring light to it because it's not tested for in most standard conventional stool cultures. Most of the time, most people are only getting their stool cultures done if they have GI symptoms. So most classically, you're not even having your, your stool analyzed for any microorganisms that are there unless you have a symptom like constipation or diarrhea, or abdominal pain or gas or bloating. But even if you do get as far as having a common stool culture, most common stool cultures do not look for Klebsiella because it's not thought to be, most classically speaking, a microorganism that's causing a lot of problems. However, we actually see multiple studies linking it to central nervous system inflammation, even to men men meningitis, where the meninges, that covering of the brain, gets inflamed. Right? This can also be linked to things like brain fog and it even can be linked to autoimmune disease. So it becomes really important if you're having not just GI symptoms, but if you're actually having symptoms of your nervous systems involved, of your brain's not functioning correctly, if you have some sort of autoimmune disease, you really wanna consider getting tested with a test company that uses testing mechanisms to analyze for Klebsiella. So in my programs, I go through how to get those types of testing. There's a lot of good companies on the market. I do a lot with a company called Vibrant Wellness. But it's this is the take home point is really beginning to see that some of these microorganisms in the gut, they can really inflame the brain. They make, can make the brain not work very well. And so you want to make sure you are doing the right tests that are actually looking for these types of microorganisms. So there are some studies that are linking Klebsiella to certain autoimmune conditions as well. And some of that is due to the impact of Klebsiella on the gut. So Klebsiella can actually be contribute to something called leaky gut or intestinal permeability that I know a lot of you are familiar with. When we have intestinal permeability or leaky gut, we actually get the immune system activated in ways it's not supposed to be. So when we have intestinal permeability, food gets into the bloodstream, food's not supposed to be there, immune system freaks out, starts attacking the food that's basically supposed to be good for us, right? But the immune system's dysregulated. All of this that can occur from Klebsiella. And then once the immune system kind of gets confused and launches this attack on food, then it can start launching attack on other areas of our body. So I wanna make sure that if you have you know, brain symptoms that you're considering proper stool culture to really get to some of the root causes of what could be going on here. And remember that you do not have to have symptoms in your gastrointestinal tract. You do not have to have symptoms there in order to have pathological infections there. So some people have bugs, whether it's parasites or viruses or bacteria or fungus in their gastrointestinal tract and they have no GI problems. They have healthy poops, they have healthy digestion, but yet there's a problem there. It's just manifesting elsewhere. So make sure you're aware of that, that you're not ruling out the possibility that whatever your symptom you're experiencing, it really could be coming from your gut in part. All right, if this was helpful, please subscribe to my channel and don't keep me a secret. Please tell me Tell your friends and family about me. I'll see you in the next one.